Hi, I'm so glad everyone can make it to talk with us today. So why don't we just get started? How has quarantine changed your activism? That's a great question. I appreciate the question. Um, quarantine has made me think really more uh, intentionally in, uh, about, about the art, the role of art in, in making change, uh, just being socially distant from folks um, and not being able to necessarily be in the same room as them and collaborate and organize and strategize. I've been, just been thinking a lot about the role that um, music can, can help uh, to, to really paint a, a vision of the world uh, that I would like to see, um, the world that I dream of, um, the world that many others dream of. And so I've just been really, I feel like I've been really actively thinking about art and music specifically um, as a form of activism. What's something new that you've learned about digital organizing and just organizing in Philly? <laughs> I keep learning, I feel like I keep learning over and over again um, how important it seems to create sort of intersectional approaches to organizing around climate so that we're, um, we're waging fights and working for solutions that challenge the various harms that people are experiencing simultaneously. Um, if that makes sense. You know, maybe just trying to focus on the commonality of the experience that we're all having right now, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so like, we're all in the same boat and kind of trying to focus on how with that connecting in that regard, and then, you know, saying, well, we all are feeling the same way about that. Let's take this energy and then try and do X or Y with that, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so what's something gratifying about your work, even with all the obvious challenges? I, I appreciate the fact that there's been a change in conversation. Um, I feel like not too long ago, people were still doubting whether like the climate crisis was real and like the validity of um, talking about climate justice, which there is so much of, and now people are kind of addressing that and saying, well, what do we do now? And what are the steps we take from here? I th my hope is that people will look at the state of things now and see what we were able to do under crisis as far as like consumption of like everything, like overconsumption in general, see what we can do without in like plenty of areas like people have just cut down on their usage of like stuff. And so I think people, I hope people will be able to look back once we get to the end of this and say, oh, you know, we can operate this way and we don't really have to go back to that way of living that we were in before. So I guess my next question is, how are you guys staying unified either within your organizations or as just the broader climate movement? So we've shifted online, so that's created um, new hurdles for sure. Um, at the same time, this moment has been incredibly clarifying about all the ways in which climate injustice is related to economic injustice, is related to racial injustice. Um, and so as these vast disparities in society are revealed, um, in some ways, I think it actually uh, brings these movements closer together rather than pushing them farther apart. Um, people who have been living so precariously and so near to the edge, um, or perhaps beyond the edge, it's, it's being revealed um, in the starkest terms. Um, and so I think our common cause is suddenly really, really evident. Um, it's just really, really just become that much more apparent that um, the system isn't working. It's, it's not working for the large majority of, of folks. And it feels very, very much like a time to be able to step fully into the vision uh, for the world we, we want, the world we need. Um, to be collaborating um, across race and class and, and gender and many different other um, identities, social identities, um, in, in order to really, yeah, bring, bring to fruition a, a, a system uh, that works, works for us all. So why do you think it's important to organize now more than ever, even with all the challenges? Um, so kind of touching off what Mitchell said earlier, 
Um, I think now is a really good time or a good example of kind of highlighting the issues we had in our like structure before. Um, and we need to really consider how we're going to grow after um, this lockdown and pandemic ends and how we can improve our system in a way that benefits more people, if not everyone. I think in times such as these when everything, there's so many unknowns and we're all just very scared, we're all confused, you know, there's just a lot going on. Having a strong sense of community and staying connected is more important than ever. You know, knowing that you have support systems, people who, you know, feel the same way about X or Y or however, whatever, I think staying connected when there's so many things that could potentially be tearing us apart is so, so, so important. Um, so yeah, the community is definitely huge in these times and there's so much value to it. Kind of like there's life and death at stake for, for real for people right now um, during the COVID-19 emergency that, you know, the degree to which um, people are able to successfully organize and, you know, to provide mutual support and to get government to do what is needed will determine you know, in in part anyway, how many people get sick and die in the coming weeks and months. And I think um, the climate crisis isn't going anywhere. So um, the degree to which we're ready to put good plans and policies in place as economic activity starts to resume, I think will determine whether greenhouse gas emissions start taking off again. Um, in the next couple of years or if they start to decline and if they can go down at the rate that we actually need to preserve a livable climate. And so, um, yeah, so I think there's like immediate life and death um, stakes and, and long-term also right now.